Hello again and welcome to our continuing series of conversations with players and coaches, student athletes, coaches, and those who are all a part of University of Texas Athletics here on TexasSports.com. My name is Craig Way. Glad to have you with us and so pleased to be joined by the University of Texas track and field head coach Edric Florial, who joins us now. Coach Flo, thanks for the time. I'll, I'll start it off the way I start with the other coaches as well, and that's uh, the way I think many of us are starting our conversations these days. We're wanting to know how our families are and how everybody's dealing with these unusual and unprecedented circumstances of uh, shelter in place and the quarantine that's going on. I mean, it's all highly unusual, but first of all, how, how about you and your family and uh, those who are close to you with regard to your health and well-being? Everybody's good. Everybody's healthy um, and accounted for. You know, we're just trying to make the best out of it. You know, just uh, creating a new normal. Um, you know, I don't think anybody was prepared to get this new normal, but we're, we're doing the best we can with it. And I'm very fortunate that everybody's healthy. Everybody's doing well. Uh, we communicate a lot and got a lot of free time on our hand, but um, making the best of it. One of the things that I, that I was really intrigued with having the opportunity to visit with you about is the fact that your, your position is unique among University of Texas coaches in having both male and female student athletes there under your tutelage as well. Have you noticed any difference at all, first of all, on how your student athletes, whether they're male or female, are dealing with all of this and, and your conversations with them as they try to navigate through this new norm as we spoke of? I, I think it's the same for both of them. I, I don't see any difference at all. They're, uh, you know, it's like kids are disappointed. Uh, you know, they, they, uh, they were happy to go home at first and now they just want to get back to their normal life like, like everybody else. Um, but there's really no different. Every student athlete is taking this in. Uh, I got guys who are very, sad and depressed and I got uh, ladies who, who just want to get back to training. Um, there's no real difference between the genders at all. Our kids just want their normal life back. They just want to get back to training. They just want to get back to live classes. Um, the one thing I realized that they realize is they really miss training. You know, like some of, some of the kids that did not like the workout. You know, one girl told me, man, what I, what I wouldn't give to have you yell at me right now for, for picking up the pace. <laughs> you know, I just did my house all day. So um, I think they, they're going to appreciate what they've had a little bit more since they don't have it. Yeah, I, I would imagine you probably uh, you could have offered to like yell at her through Zoom or something like that if that would have made her feel any better, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I offered, but she's like, it won't be the same, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about that. Um, in terms of, first of all, you, you brought up uh, uh, the, the work. Let me ask you about uh, the challenge of conditioning for your student athletes. And, and it's an ongoing thing from the indoor season to the outdoor season with your uh, track and field athletes. But first of all, about the conditioning challenge that your student athletes are have come to terms with and what they're having to deal with at the moment. You know, some of them have lots of stuff available. They have uh, a weight room and facilities available to train. Um, and some have nothing. So we've had to be creative, uh, making up sort of at-home work out just to keep them distracted. Uh, one of the things that, that's important now is to have a routine. You know, it's just sitting around and waiting to go to bed is not ideal. So knowing that coaches send you some optional workouts you can do at home, it, at least it makes them schedule. You know, they got class online and they got their workout that they do at home if they don't have uh, anywhere to go train. But most of them are able to get outside. With our sports, you can get outside, get a mask on, and, and run 20, 30 minutes and get back in and stretch in your house and, and be relatively safe. So those who don't have facilities, we just got to be creative with them. You just mentioned about uh, putting the mask on. With, with, with so much oxygen intake and expulsion and running events, ha has that affected them, any of them adversely, as they try to continue their conditioning and training about when they're outside and when they are wearing a mask? Yeah, most of the kids who, who, who are wearing a the mask, they, they typically uh, take it off while they're running, unless they're walking by or running by somebody, then they sort of put it back on. I, I've asked them to just be really deliberate. Uh, if you're jogging and somebody's coming in the opposite direction, just pop it on. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, able, they're able to uh, manage that fairly well. Um, they don't really wear it during the run other than when they're encountering somebody going the opposite direction or going by them. 
I mentioned the uh, the unusual situation of both, uh, or at least in, in your case, different from others in working with both male and female student athletes. There's another situation here uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on, the fact that you just came through the indoor season before the inter interruption happened uh, and the disruption, obviously, of this academic and athletic school year. Um, having come through the indoor season might give to some folks a little bit of resolution and comfort hey we were able to get the indoor season in before but it, the, i know you've got ones involved in both and and your staff involved in both and so there's that disruption regardless how did that affect your program given the fact that an indoor season was able to be completed but not the outdoor well see so the, the indoor was actually not completed we were um we got the news that the meet was canceled at the NCAA. So we were at the NCAA championship uh, on uh, Thursday. We have a regular routine. We just go to the facility, you warm up, you familiarize yourself with the facility. Hey, there you got, the, this is a little sharp turn. Make sure you pay attention to that. The sand is a little thick, things like that. And we were in the middle of that. So the kids were fully warming up, sweating, pushing out the blocks. And then the word came about. So it, it was tough because, you know, one minute you're in the blocks getting ready for a championship that's going to happen the next day. And the next minute we're packing up, heading to the airport to go back home. So um, for the kids who would work all year to get to the NCAA, that, that was really difficult and, and really sad. I mean, I, I felt terrible for them because they'd given away so much to get to that point and not to have the chance to complete that task uh, was hard to see. I mean, some of them I had to spend lots of time with them getting back at the hotel to calm him down, lots of people crying, uh, lots of disappointment, and especially to a kid that this was the last indoor ever. Uh, like John Burt, uh, man, he, he was really, really, really disappointed. I mean, this was his last season in a Texas uniform of any kind. And all of a sudden, he's running, he's just PR, he just won the conference by a mile, and was having arguably his best year at Texas ever and not to get a chance to finish. And then he's not gonna get that indoor season back. So for John, it was tough. So um, having the indoor was helpful, um, but it's almost like unfinished business. I, I, I'm not sure if having it made it better or worse. It's almost like, you know, he's sitting in front of a really nice dinner plate and you take a bite of mashed potatoes and they say, okay, that's it. Like, I, I'm not sure if having that bite of mashed potatoes make it better or not having the dinner at all. So I, to me, I, I would probably say no dinner would be better than having a really good steak and only being able to buy the bite out of it. Yeah, and, and, and I'm glad you clarified that as well because my, and I, I didn't clarify it enough, I was referring a first to the Big 12 meet having got through there, but I had not yet worked my way to, to the NCAA and I'm glad you were able to expand on that and, and, and talk about that. In terms of uh, the ones who were able to get through and and uh, the the women's team winning an, an indoor meet as well did that also kind of uh, spike up you might say the frustration coming off of that outstanding performance heading into NCAA indoors only to have it all shut down at that point yeah yeah to the to the kids who had a great conference meet that were heading to the NCAA with a chance to win, don't, don't forget some of those kids have never gone to the NCAA this was the, some of them the first time ever making it. So you spend four years at a university and you finally qualify for the NCA and then you don't get a chance to compete. That can throw all kind of emotion in you. So the kids that think we have the best chance of winning, you know, like the trip Pippery, he, he was devastated. Um, you know, had never won indoor, was looking forward to winning his first NCA championship. You know, Julian Alfred was having the year of a lifetime. You know, Kat Gillespie transferred from Harvard. He was a decent athlete, and all of a sudden she's a world beater, and she's thinking, this is my first time heading to the NCAA, and I'm going to do some damage, and that doesn't happen. So, um, I, yeah, I, I think having a taste of success and not being able to eat the full meal or drink the full glass is more painful than no taste at all. Well, and, and uh, I was going to go back to uh, uh, that particular comparison that you were making, that, that analogy, because uh, that leads me to talking about your outdoor athletes and, uh, you know, about not being able to have an outdoor season to get through and have a chance, to get, especially after the huge leaps and bounds this program made under your direction last year. And, and, and I know there was a lot of great and high hopes for being able to take this to an even higher level at the NCAAs once you got through the Big 12 season as well. So what's been the message to to those who were going to be definitely a, a major part of what you were hoping for for the outdoor season, knowing that that's not a possibility now? 
Yeah, we, we just, we're focusing on tomorrow. We're focusing on next week, next month, next year. And we're just putting all our eggs on, on that we're going to get through this together as a group and, and, and that we're all in this together. Um, Sometimes those words goes in deaf ears because the kids are so devastated, but but we got to keep pounding that in and reinforcing that, that you know what, it's not about yesterday, it's not about what we miss, about what we have to look forward to. You know, we, we, are, we have a beautiful facility that, that will be completed. We talk about that a lot. Uh, we're getting brand new uniforms. So you, as a head coach, I'm just being creative of positive things to share. Um, we have Zoom calls every week. So every event coach on my staff has a mandatory Zoom call. And I jump in there, we, we joke, we laugh. We're just trying to do the regular family stuff that, that typically keeps us connected. Um, you know, and, and yeah, I, I'm not sure if there's a magical formula how you get through this. I, I think we're, we're making this up as we go along as adults and, and try to care for the, these young people who are, who are struggling to a tough time. And then uh, on top of that, you, you made reference to this earlier, to have to deal with all of this is, is certainly difficult and challenging but then to have a completely different way in how they study now and how what they're having to deal with academically with everything. I would imagine that also just adds to, I don't know, the, the, the stress of how they're having to cope with all of this. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're taking classes on your computer. <laughs> you're taking classes, but some of them take classes that sitting on your bed and it, it just doesn't feel real or feel the same. I mean, actually, I left out, we have, we have four or five javelin throwers who train all fall and they never had a chance to even line up. So, you know, we're talking about somebody competed indoor and not outdoors. The javelin throwers never competed and they train from August all the way to March. Um, and, you know, March is when we open up the outdoor season. So it's almost like, again, you can taste it and feel it, but you, you're not going to be able to get it. Um, so, yeah, I, I think the new normal for these kids is difficult. You know, we talk about the, the millennials and, and being at home, being homebodies, looking at their screen. They are tired of looking at their screen. You know, they, they, the, the things they enjoy the most about, you know, having their face on the screen, they find it no fun at all. Uh, um, and, and I can understand if that's the only thing you got to do, it's not fun. So I think this might help some of them to, to realize that, man, I, being outside is so much more cool than sitting at home looking at your screen. The, uh, the other uh, thing I wanted to ask about and get your input on this is uh, the postponement of the Olympic Games mm -hmm. uh, to 2021. And uh, for your uh, Olympic hopefuls as well, uh, what, what has been the conversation about how this affects their preparation and what they're looking forward to now with things being pushed back at least there is the comfort of a target date there around the same time in 2021 and how that's affected them yeah so the difficulty with that is if, if you were on the roll man you're unhappy because you're thinking i'm going to make the olympic team and get a medal if you were not on a roll or injured blessing in disguise i get a chance to uh, heal up and get ready for next year so we have some kids that had mentally sold themselves out just to get to the Olympics and make the team. And it's almost like you got to reboot. You got to deflate and reboot yourself to get ready to sell yourself out for the next Olympics as well. So for me, I, I'm just, all I talk about is what's coming up next. I just talk about, hey, we'll talk tomorrow and, 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 and try to keep it very short-sighted. And because if you start thinking too long, man, it become depressive. I got to wait another year and a half for the Olympics. You know, coach, I, I, I PR'd every week and I was number one in the nation. I was going to do this. And it's like, no, let's not even talk about that. Let's talk about, hey, tomorrow, if you can get out and go for a walk, go for a little jog and stretch, we'll get back on the phone and talk. And, and, and the goal right now is just take it day by day and just look forward to tomorrow uh, and look forward to doing something fun, something cool tomorrow. And then the next day and then the next day and the next day after that. It sounds like what you're describing is that it's more of a challenge uh, for you as a coach and for your staff in, uh, in talking about all this with the ones who either were definitely going to be Olympians or stood the best chance of it in compartmentalizing that as opposed to the ones who now may have been given that extra opportunity that were on the outside looking in. Sure, yeah, the, the ones who were not having a good year, this is great for them. They're happy. They're so excited that they now have a real chance to make the Olympic team because now they can sort of get themselves together. They have time to get themselves together. Uh, the ones who 
were likely to make it because they were running so well, devastated. Um, and, and I'm almost trying to convince them that we can be even better ready next year. You know, we can work on some things uh, that, that we didn't have a chance to work on. And, and you just try to put a positive spin on it. But the ones that, the one that were running well, man, that, that's, it's a blow because the Olympics, it comes every four years. So next time in 2021, you might not be as healthy and you might get a cold, you might get an injury. So you're knocking on wood, hoping that you have the similar year. It, it sounds like almost too that it really presents for you personally a real conflicting situation because you're having to deal with both sides of that. The ones who are really disappointed, the ones who may have drawn some encouragement out of this. That that would I would imagine really make you feel conflicted. Yes, me. I'm 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 saying two different messages to two different people. I get off the phone and I'm saying, man, we got lucky. We're going to be so ready next year. We got a blessing. And I'm talking to the next guy and it's like, man. We got to refocus. We got to get back in it. It's going to be okay. It's like, and, and that kid is crying, saying, Coach, I was number one in the world. It's like, yeah, but you know, we, we got to get back to number one in the world next year. And so this is really going to be a big test of who can reboot, who can kind of take a deep breath. You know, in baseball, I think there's some terminology in Little League. You, 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 you strike out, you wipe it off the head, and you move on. It's like being able to sort of wipe it off the head and, and move on is going to be difficult, but we, we have to get that done. We have to convince these kids that it's going to be okay. And, and, and that's what CDC talks about. It's going to be okay. We're going to get to this together. We've got to keep pounding that in until the kids actually sell in and buy, buy them to that. You, uh, you brought up, uh, Chris Del Conte, it's, it's CDC's words that they've been encouraging for you, for your staff, knowing about how committed the university is uh, behind your program, even in some more difficult times and circumstances of the things we hear at, at a lot of the other collegiate programs across the nation? Sure. Uh, our message has been pretty consistent, man. Our leadership is really strong. Um, so we've been very fortunate. Um, we haven't heard, you know, a negative message about us. Some of the kids have been granted an extra year. They can come back and CDC is looking after ways to make that happen. And, and that, that's what's cool about it is that, I know the times are tough and I know things are not doing so well, but that guy is all about positive, about how great we're going to be. So, and, and that, that's cool to have a leader that, that can get past, um, you know, how bad times are and just focus on positive spinning it. That, man, this is going to be great. This is going to be, that's his favorite word. Man, this isn't going to be great. The university says, we're going to be great. We're going to be great. And, it's, and after a while, you start saying it and the kids start saying it. Final thing here, uh, Coach, and, and it's about uh, the mindset that, that you and your staff take forward to this. Like you talked about, the message has to be ongoing to your student athletes. And there are better days come and take it a, a day at a time. Uh, is, it, is it the same thing for you as the leader of this program to your staff, to everybody, your, the people who support you in terms of uh, bringing these student athletes along, that they also have to make sure not to lose their their encouragement through all of this. Sure, everybody. Uh, we have staff meeting with everybody that touched our student athlete. Well, I have one every week, um, from strength training to uh, uh, academic support, uh, equipment manager. Everybody's on the call, and and we have uh, the same consistent message. And if we're concerned about a student athlete, then we we sort of do the uh, we all jump on that kid. Everybody calls, send them a text, and then reinforce. And, and it's good because. Kids have different relationships. They might be closer to somebody else on the staff, and, and, and I might not know about it. So that person brings it to the fold, and, and we, we deal with each one of those student athletes when we talk about it. So this way, it guarantees we're not going to miss much, uh, and, and we're going to be able to kind of tend to the needs of all of them. Um, you know, trying to find things to send. We're sending people, sending the kids a pair of shoes. Their shoe really doesn't mean much, but you're getting something from track, and track still exists. Um, you know, we... we share pictures and we do uh, Q and A's in those meetings. We pick something fun and we go, go have at it, just run with that subject and have a good laugh. And so I think the kids actually look forward to those meetings to see their teammates for sure. Cause you get to see the one good thing with these Zoom meetings, you, you're seeing everybody's face. And I, I can't tell you some of the backdrop of some of these pictures at the end of some of our meetings that they're, they're, yeah, they know I can't really get on them cause they're, they're thousands of miles away. So they're, they're having no fun with me right now, which is good. And, and that's kind of the way I want it. 
Coach, it's always a pleasure to visit with you. I appreciate you taking the time. We wish you uh, continued health and well-being for you and your family and your extended family, your student athletes as well. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. That, that's University of Texas track and field head coach Edric Floreal here on TexasSports.com.